Hello, and thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today and to welcome President Biden and showcase Arizona's leadership in bringing semiconductor manufacturing back to the United States. <laughs> Chairman Liu, Dr. Chang, Secretary Raimondo, Mr. Cook, Senator Kelly, Mayor Gallego, Governor-elect Hobbs, President Crow, and President Robbins, along with all our esteemed guests from near and far. It's great to be back at TSMC's Arizona facility to celebrate this major milestone. As I stand with you here today on the site of TSMC's high-tech chip manufacturing operations, I'm reminded of my first face-to-face -face meeting with TSMC leadership at the state capitol in 2017. Back then, this corner of Phoenix looked much different. The buildings, the cranes, the work crews, none of this was here. A lot has transpired in Arizona and around the globe since then. But one thing has remained the same. Arizona continues to offer the premier environment for advanced manufacturing anywhere in the world. This was on my mind when we discussed TSMC's vision, a vision to build one of the world's most technologically advanced chip factories on U.S. soil. I know new, no place would better complement their operations than Arizona, and it's a special day to now see this vision take shape. When TSMC looked at Arizona, they saw a land of opportunity. Today, TSMC has begun to transform this landscape into a global technology epicenter. There is no better proof of how important this facility will be than by President Biden's visit today. We're eager to show this impressive operation firsthand. Upon completion, this facility and the newly announced second fab will employ thousands of Arizonans and have the capacity to produce 600,000 high-tech wafers a year. The semiconductor chips made right here in Arizona will drive the engines of growth far beyond the northern edge of Phoenix. These chips TSMC's Arizona-made chips will power economies around the world. TSMC's present, presence has attracted dozens of Taiwan-based suppliers expanding to Arizona, from companies such as Sunlit Chemical, Chang Chung, Kanto PPC, LCY Chemical, and more. To date, the total investment from supplier companies exceeds $1 billion. And we are so grateful for the many new partnerships we've been able to establish over the past few years. Those partnerships were on full display when I traveled to Taiwan in August and sat down with not just TSMC, but many of our suppliers as well. I had the opportunity to meet President Tsai Ing Wen and reaffirm Arizona's longstanding and deep commitment to Taiwan. For those in the audience that may not know, Arizona's partnership with Taiwan extends back decades. For more than 25 years, Taiwan pilots flying the F-16 fighter jet have trained at Luke Air Force Base west of Phoenix. We are proud of Arizona's role in helping Taiwan bolster its defense and protect its people. The Arizona-Taiwan relationship is truly a special one, one rooted in friendship and trust and with ample opportunity to grow. When TSMC set out to build its new high-tech fab, they had all 50 states to choose from. They chose Arizona because of our robust and growing talent pool, 
unbeatable business environment, and unparalleled quality of life. In addition to TSMC, Arizona Semiconductor Landscape includes global leaders like Intel, NXP, On Semiconductor, Microchip, Benchmark Electronics, and more. As the U.S. semiconductor industry continues to advance in the years ahead, Arizona will be the engine powering its growth. One example of this is Apple, which recently announced it will source chips from right here in Arizona, a point of pride for our state and a huge economic win. In closing, I'd like to thank Chairman Liu, Dr. Chang, everyone at TSMC, as well as their clients and customers for joining us today. I'd also like to recognize the many partners who made this project possible. This includes two federal administrations, our congressional delegation, many of whom are here today, the City of Phoenix, GPEC, the Arizona State Land Department, local utilities, and more. They all played a role in passing the CHIPS Act, which will bolster the semiconductor industry nationwide. Finally, I want to recognize Sandra Watson and her team at the Arizona Commerce Authority, who have poured so much energy and dedication into this project. Today, we gather in celebration with special thanks and gratitude to TSMC and all their partners. The work being done around us is that of national and international significance. And the best part is, the best is yet to come. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, and Senator Mark Kelly. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is wonderful to be here. It's a great day. By the way, if this is late fall or early winter in Arizona, I'll take it. We just arrived from D.C. It's wonderful. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here to join Dr. Chang and Chairman Liu and, of course, President Biden to mark this incredible milestone. When the President called me and asked me to serve in his cabinet as Commerce Secretary, he said, I want you to come work with me to rebuild and revitalize American manufacturing putting Americans to work, making things in America. And that's exactly what we're doing. And I was so proud to stand by the President when he signed the Chips and Science Act earlier this year. And to all of you who helped us get that across the finish line, I want to say thank you. As many of you know, right now in the United States, we don't really make any of the world's most sophisticated, leading-edge, cutting-edge chips. And that's not just an economic security or vulnerability. That's a national security issue, a national security vulnerability. Today, we say we're changing that. TSMC's investment in Arizona and their future investments are going to help transform America's semiconductor industry. The cutting-edge chips that are going to be produced right here in Arizona will be more advanced than any chips that have ever been manufactured on U.S. soil. And we are so proud of that. And I also understand I was talking with the governor and the federal delegation on the way over here. There are already over 155 suppliers in the supply chain to TSMC interested also to locate in Arizona. So we are building an entire ecosystem. And this is exactly the kind of investment that we intend to catalyze, incentivize, and keep going 
with the CHIPS for America program. Because by investing here in America, we're going to build a domestic supply chain, strengthen our economic and national security, unleash the next generation of research and development and innovation, and create good-paying, high-quality jobs. Uh, and I couldn't be more excited to get to work investing the CHIPS Act. And thank you to Congress for making that happen. So I have to thank President Biden for his leadership. I want to thank the members of Congress right here in Arizona, all of whom supported it, led by fantastic Senator Kelly, who is here. Rep yeah, give him a hand. Fresh off a hard-fought and well-earned and well-deserved re-election victory. And Representatives Gallego, Grijalva, O'Halloran, and Stanton, all of whom voted for the CHIPS Act. Today, let's celebrate. Today, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate TSMC. Let's celebrate Arizona. And let's celebrate America. And then let's get to work to make this as big and as successful as it can be. So thank you for your support of me. And please join me in welcoming Senator Mark Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, everybody, for being here. What a fantastic day today is. Uh, Secretary Raimondo, you've been a terrific leader in these efforts to pass the CHIPS Act, but also to see the goals of the CHIPS Act become a reality. So thank you for all your hard work, and welcome back. Welcome back to Arizona. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And Mr. President, we're glad to have you here to mark such an exciting milestone for TSMC and for the state of Arizona. This is, this is a big deal for Arizona. Today is a big deal. And it's also a big deal for the entire country. Today, the United States only manufactures about 10% of the world's microchips. And of the best chips in the world, we manufacture 0%. But today, that is about to change. And I'm excited for you and everyone here to see how Arizona is leading the way. Because this is exactly what we envisioned when we worked with Republicans and Democrats to pass and fund the CHIPS Act, getting companies like TSMC and their suppliers to expand their operations in the United States of America. Now, this facility will soon manufacture the most advanced microchips in the world. And it's going to be done right here in our state. For years, politicians have talked about bringing manufacturing and supply chains back to our country. Well, now we're actually doing it. That's going to lower costs for Americans and strengthen our national security by ensuring that the most advanced chips do not need to cross an ocean to get here. And over the next few years, it's going to create tens of thousands of new high-paying jobs, many of which do not require a four-year degree. Now, not too long ago, I met a, a woman named uh, Tarje, and she uh, was unemployed for over a year. She couldn't find a job. And she was uh, out of work. She had three kids, and she was looking for an opportunity. And surprisingly, she found in her spam folder, now we all often don't go looking in there for stuff, but she found an advertisement for a program at a community college here in our state, at Estrella Mountain Community College, called the Quick Start Program. She started that program, which was 10 days long, and at the end of the program, she got an interview with a semiconductor manufacturer, and today she is a semiconductor manufacturing technician here in our state. Now, that story, because of this plant and the ones that will follow, will be repeated here thousands and thousands of times. This is such a win for our state. For folks who do not have a four-year degree, they will now be able to raise a family on that salary as a semiconductor manufacturing technician. So this is a win 
for the state of Arizona. It's a win for our universities, for our community colleges, but most importantly for our, goal, our global competitiveness. We're on the road to a new future where the best chips in the world are made from start to finish right here in America. And that road runs through the state of Arizona. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here today for this, uh, this exciting announcement. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome TSMC Chairman, Dr. Mark Liu. As the semiconductor manufacturing has truly become vital to the modern economy, there has been a growing consensus to revitalize semiconductor manufacturing in the United States. Under the exceptional leadership of President Biden and with great efforts from Secretary Raimondo, this initiative was finally transformed into real and tangible action through the forward-looking measures of the Chips and Science Act. This state-of-the-art facility behind us is a testimony that TSMC is also taking a giant step forward to help build a vibrant semiconductor ecosystem in the United States. Today, it is truly our great honor to have President Biden and Secretary Raimondo join us to celebrate this significant event. Now, 
Please join me in warmly welcoming the stage, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. seats, but if you have a seat, please take them. <laughs> I once said that when I first became president, and they said, Biden is so slow, he doesn't realize there are no seats out here. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mark, for the introduction. I appreciate it very much. Your company's commitment to building, as you put it, is a vibrant, a vibrant semiconductor ecosystem in the United States. That's what we're doing with your help. Thank you to everyone at TSMC, especially Morris Chang, who founded this company in 1987 and uh, grew it into a global giant. But the most significant thing about him is his wife, Sophie. I tell you, believe it or not, Sophie worked in my first senatorial campaign when I ran for the Senate. True story. So I owe an awful lot to this company. We had a lieutenant governor named S.B. Wu and his wife, Kathy, were on my staff, and they got her involved. And so I want to I wanna thank her very much for that. Mayor, thanks for welcoming us to your city. And uh, Gov, uh, you and I are different sides, but we see and share the same vision as Arizona is a hub, literally a hub for, tech, for technical change that's going to take place. And that's well underway. Governor-elect Hobbs, is she is Governor-elect Hobbs here? I don't think. Gov, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you're starting off in the right place. This is going to be an incredible asset to the state of Arizona. A special thanks to the incredible Arizona Democratic members of Congress who fly, flew out with me today from Washington. Senator Kelly, you deliver for Arizona every single day, including, including on the Chips and Science Act, which will bring jobs to this state and would not be law without you. And that's, no hyper, that's not hyperbole. Arizona is lucky to have you fighting for them in the, for the next six years. And Gabby Gifford, a great friend, is here as well. Uh, when I gave Gabby the Presidential Medal of Freedom this summer, I said she was one of the most courageous people I've ever known. People of Tucson elected her to the Congress three times because they trusted her, they believe in her, and she's the embodiment, the embodiment of that core American trait. Never, ever, ever, ever give up. And she never does. And I want to thank Senator Sinema, who can't be with us today. She's in Washington working on another major piece of legislation. A tremendous advocate for the people of, of Arizona and a leader in so many issues important to this state. Four of Arizona's representatives are here with me, Reuben, Greg, Tom, and Raul. And uh, where, where are you guys? They've, they're, and they, we flew out together. They're still talking to me. <laughs> anyway, thank you, gentlemen, very much for all you've done to get us here today. And uh, champions for the constituents working to build an economy that doesn't leave anyone behind. Doesn't leave anyone behind. Gina Raimondo is an outstanding Secretary of Commerce, a fierce champion of U.S. industry, especially the se in se semiconductors. I want to thank you to the business leaders here today. Tim Cook of Apple. Where are you, Tim? He, he buys a few of these little chips. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he's, a, he's a small customer here at this outfit, between 25 and 35 percent of their... But anyway, uh, I hope they're treating you well. <laughs> And Sanjay of Micron. Sanjay has represented more than two dozen tech and manufacturing companies. And you're here because you're seeing what we're all seeing. America Manufacturing is back, folks. America Manufacturing is back. I recently uh, took a trip literally around the world, starting in Egypt and ending up in Guam and finally coming home ending with a meeting in Indonesia with the G20. The countries with many of the largest economies in the world. 
And what was clear in those meetings is the United States is better positioned than any other nation to lead the world economy in the years ahead if we keep our focus. There's a strong sense from many, from all the world leaders of the resiliency of the American economy. And uh, we're seeing it here at home with investments like the one we we're talking about today. Together, with the help of your elected leaders here today, we've had an extraordinary two years of progress. We passed the American Rescue Plan, keeping tens of thousands of cops, firefighters, teachers, first responders on the job in all 50 states when revenues dropped because of the, like, the nature of the economy. We fully vaccinated more than 220 million people. We're rebuilding our infrastructure, fixing our roads, our bridges, our airports, strengthening American manufacturing by creating 750,000 manufacturing jobs just since I've become president. What I'm most excited about is people are starting to feel a sense of optimism as they see the impact of the achievements in their own lives. It's going to accelerate in months ahead. And as part of the broad story about the economy we're building that works for everyone, one, of the grow, one that grows from the bottom up and the middle out that positions Americans to win the economic competition of the 21st century. When we grow it that way, the poor have a shot, the middle class do well, and the wealthy do very well. My dad used to have a saying. He said, you say, a job is about a lot more than a paycheck, Joey. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about being able to look your child in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Thousands of Arizonans are going to be able to look their kid in the eye because of what you're doing here today and saying, honey, it's going to be okay and mean it. Back in April 2021, I met with Mark and other industry leaders. TSMC had made a $12 billion investment here in Phoenix to build the first fab to make semiconductors in the United States. Now the equipment is ready to move in. Next year, commercial operations are going to begin. And today, TSMC has announced a second major investment. They will construct a second fab here in Phoenix to build chips, three nano chips, the three nano chip. Chips that are three nano. And you know what I'm saying. <laughs> nano, no, no. I don't know. But look, these are the most advanced semiconductor chips on the planet. The chips will power iPhones and MacBooks, as Tim Cook can attest. Apple had to buy all the advanced chips from overseas. Now they're going to bring more of their supply chain here home. It could be a game changer. All told, TSMC is investing $40 billion here in Arizona, the largest foreign investment in the history of this state. Over 10,000 construction jobs and 10,000 high-tech jobs will be created. And I want to thank everyone in this company for making this happen. You know, I know our hosts won't mind my pointing out that America invented the chip. Morris Chang was a pioneer in the era of graduating from MIT and getting his start at Texas Instrument. Federal investment helped reduce the cost of those chips, creating a market and an entire industry that America led. Over 30 years ago, America had more than 30 percent of the global chip production. Then something happened. American manufacturing, the backbone of our economy, began to get hollowed out. Companies moved jobs overseas. Today, today we're down to producing only around 10 percent of the world's chips, despite leading the world in research and design of new chip technologies. But folks, where is it written? Where is it written that America can't lead the world once again in manufacturing? I don't know where that's written. And we're proving it can. Not just here in America. Micron is investing $100 billion to build semiconductor factories in Syracuse, New York. Intel is investing $20 billion to do the same in Ohio. IBM is investing $20 billion in Poughkeepsie, New York. I just went up there. These investments are helping us build and strengthen the supply chain here in America. I want to be clear. As we build a stronger supply chain, our allies and partners are building alongside us as well. Some of the companies here today are customers that are going to buy these chips made here. Some are suppliers that are going to help make these chips. And they're all, they all depend on a strong supply chain. That's why we're doing what we're doing here in Arizona matters across the country and around the world. Folks, as we see here in Phoenix, the United States is a top destination for companies across the globe looking to make investments. 
because we have a world-class, highly skilled, committed workforce, union labor. And more than, you can clap for that. More than 3,000 union workers, most highly trained and best in the world, are helping build this fab. The second fab we built with union labor as well, and we're working with companies, community colleges, technical schools, universities, union-led apprentice programs and training programs. I've had a conversation with the Business Roundtable, all the major chambers of commerce. The reason why business should be hiring union folks, if you don't mind my saying, is simple. They're the best in the world. We're the single greatest technicians in the world. We're the best laborers in the world. And you build the best products. But you don't just decide that you want to be a pipe fitter or electrician like most people think. It takes four or five years of hard work as an apprentice. It's like going to college. You're the best trained workers in the world, and Wall Street didn't build this country, although there's a lot of good folks there. The middle class built the country, and unions built the middle class. As I said, we're making a once-in-a-generation investments in our nation's roads, bridges, railroads, ports, airports, lead-free water systems, high-speed Internet. The biggest investment in American infrastructure since Eisenhower's interstate highway system. And here in Phoenix, we're building a new taxiway for Sky Harbor Airport to cut down how long planes wait to take off and arrive at a gate after landing. We're making flying in and out of Phoenix smoother and more economic. We're building a pedestrian bicycle bridge across the river in South Phoenix, extending light rail to connection families in South Phoenix with jobs and opportunities downtown. Down the road in, 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 in Buckeye, Core Power is making lithium-ion batteries to power electric vehicles and electric grid storage. It's a $1.2 billion investment. It's going to create thousands of good manufacturing jobs, 90% of which don't require a college degree, and yet you get a good wage. And we're replacing Phoenix diesel buses with new models powered by clean energy to significantly reduce pollution, especially for the folks getting on and off of those buses. Diesel exhaust can really make people sick. That's why we've been helping school districts all across America electrify their school buses to help kids avoid childhood asthma. And as of, and, and as of now, more than 326,000 households in, America, in Arizona are getting affordable high-speed Internet thanks to our investment in infrastructure with much more to come. When Arizonans see the big picture in your hometowns, cranes going up, shovels in the ground, workers with hard hats, I want you to feel the way I feel, pride, pride. We can do what we can do together is just anything, virtually anything. Folks, here's the bottom line. Our approach to building the economy of the future is from the bottom up and the middle out, and it's working. We've added jobs every single month of my presidency, 10.5 million new jobs, 750,000 of them manufacturing jobs. Exports are up which means we're making things here in America and shipping the products overseas rather than shipping the jobs overseas to make things overseas and bring them back home. And we have much more to do. All this is why the economy grew 2.9 percent last quarter. And now inflation, the grocery store is coming down. Prices of things like clothing, televisions, appliances are going down. And there's good news for the holiday season. Gas prices have fallen below the levels they are before Putin's invasion of Ukraine. It's going to take time to get inflation back to normal levels as we keep our job market resilient. We could see setbacks along the way, to state the obvious. But we're laser focused on this. And all the hard work is making a real difference for people, including folks right here in Arizona, like Patricia McKinley, who owns her own small trucking business here in Phoenix. She has five employees. The pandemic hit her company hard. But these new infrastructure projects for Arizona mean more work for her and her team, a chance to grow her business, to secure her, her, her business. And Paul Sarosa, who grew up picking seasonal product, uh, seasonal produce here in Arizona, his parents believed in education. So Paul went to college and studied business. He launched a cleaning business. Now he has over 100 employees in his company. TSMC is now his biggest customer. And now they're expanding into Phoenix. 
Paul will be hiring a lot more workers. These are countless stories like these across the country where people are benefiting from what you all are doing. People working hard every day, never giving up, seizing every opportunity they can to get ahead. That's who this is about. Folks like Patricia and Paul. And they're why I'm unapologetic about fighting for American workers and getting the economy to work for working people. Let me close with this. It's been a rough few years for hardworking Americans, for businesses as well. A lot of families, and a lot of families, things are still pretty rough. But there are bright spots where America is reasserting itself, and the innovation and manufacturing boom here in Arizona is one of those places. I ask leaders of companies like TSMC this question. When the United States decides to invest considerable resources in a new industry that we need to build up, does that encourage business or to get them in the game, or does it discourage them? The answer is it encourages them. Federal investment attracts private sector investment, creates jobs and industry, and it demonstrates we're all in this together. And that's what today's about. I've never been more optimistic, and I mean this when I've been around a long while, as you can see. <laughs> but I've never been more optimistic about America's future, and I really mean that. Never. We're building a better America. We just have to keep going, and I know we can. We're proving it's never, ever, ever, ever been a good bet to bet against America. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Folks, we just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America, and there is virtually nothing Nothing beyond our capacity if we work together. Not a single thing. So let's go keep this moving. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>